Hello, everyone, and welcome in once again. It's time for the Behind the Bench Coaches Show. Tom Callahan here with you, joined as I am every week by River Dragons head coach Jerome Bichard. And this week's player guest is Captain Josh Petrantonio. Fellas, Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year, Tom. Yeah, Happy New Year. It's a little chilly. Uh, I had to turn the heat on a little bit on the way over. My hands are freezing. It was gorgeous yesterday, but... Yeah. Living in Georgia... I know. I'm getting spoiled. I'm spoiled. You're getting soft. Dude, You're, I am. Your blood's thinning? I am. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't been here a quarter as long as you have, and I'm already dreading the cold back home. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, I spent, what, six years in Arizona, and uh, it, it gets me a little bit sometimes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I'm almost embarrassed to admit that, but it happens. It's all right. That, uh, that's, hey, we get the privilege of living in a really nice climate and just happen to be able to, you know, play and or coach and yeah, or talk about Yeah, you know hockey. what? Uh, I think us as a society, we always have to whine and cry about something and have something to, you know, negative. Oh, instead of negative pulling stuff. the positive out of the situation, you yeah. always talk about the negatives. That's right. That's right. And I'm usually pretty good at that. I'm usually not negative. You know, <laughs> I will say this, Boom. There are times when you come out with some positives from stuff, and I'm like, oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, you you are really good at that, especially watching game tape sometimes. So, well, I just try to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about game tape before we got here. It's uh, a big three-game weekend series. Um one game here, two in Carolina, six out of nine points for the River Dragons. So now that you've had some time to digest this three-game series, give us your thoughts. Well, I mean, obviously, I want to be greedy and wanted all three. Um, we gave ourselves a really good chance to get all nine points. Um, but, you know, being realistic, you know, uh, six out of nine, you know, splitting on the road and, and winning at home, it's a pretty good weekend, uh, per se. So, um, you know, if that's a three game series and that's playoffs, we win the series two right. out of three. So, um, but you know what, uh, on, even on a, on a nicer note, like we played really well, all three games. Like, I mean, uh, there wasn't one guy that wasn't finish, finishing their checks. Um, shout out to Alex Jameoff. Holy smokes. He was a wrecking ball. And, uh, you know what, um, you know, every time somebody touched the puck and jammers on the ice, that guy that guy was stopped in his tracks. And, um, you know, we say as a coach or whatever, as a defending, defending, like you're defending the puck, what is your job? Your job is to separate that guy from the puck. Jammer did that all weekend. I mean, um, you know, we were talking about it earlier this afternoon. Uh, you know, how do you stop the cycle? You stop the cycle by hitting and eliminating somebody, and that stops the cycle. Um, and, uh, you know, any time for the most part that they were uh, getting on a little bit of a roll, that kind of happened. So, you know, positive, that was, uh, it was a great weekend watching. I mean, win, lose, or draw. I mean, it was a great hockey to, to watch. The fans at home and in Carolina were very well entertained. Really did have a playoff feel to it. You agree with that, Petro? I, at least for me, watching the game, I'm like, man, this is intense. Yeah, I was going to say thanks for leaving something for me to pipe in with. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> Way to cover it. It is no. my, it is my show. It's the coaching show. I'm it like, is, uh, I mean. yes, featuring. No, you know what? It was it was really good to see. Um, I think we were physical all three games, and that's not something that we had seen. But it was nice to see all the boys come together and and play hard and play for each other and. Um, the only negative was we took some undisciplined penalties. Uh, was really the only negative, and uh, um, you know what? I mean, that's all they got is a good power play. I mean, if we play, if we play that style and stay out of the box, and uh, hopefully I don't get in trouble for this, and have a good a good couple referees that are able to see some of the. Uh, see through some of the stuff um, and maybe not play, you know, maybe not uh, uh, ref situational and, and this and that. I mean, uh, I, I think it's, it's, it's us the whole way. So, you know, anyways, great weekend all in all. Yeah, it was, it was, it was nice to see the boys um, bring a, bring a style in a game that obviously we, we know we had, but we hadn't seen yet. And to be able to put 
almost three complete games together back to back to back is scary for the teams that have to come in and and face us or host us bad thing for the guys is i've seen it happen now now i'm going to demand that for every single game and they're in for a bad nothing wrong with setting the bar high <laughs> well the bar is set now and i know uh and I, I've known all along we can do it, and that's how we need to play. Hey, it's a new year. We reset. You yeah, said that this right. morning. That's right. <laughs> I, I also, like that philosophy. I, ask, I like I it. I also got a couple new players in the team, too. <laughs> new <Yeah>. names. <laughs> Johnny. <laughs> I, I don't even know who in the hell Johnny is, but apparently we had Johnny. <laughs> he's, he's standing there doing film this morning, and, and he was talking about how our, our goalies are expected to make all the saves, and he points over to – Goes, yeah, Colgs and uh, and Johnny over there, <laughs> and I'm just dying laughing in the corner, and me and Jammer are cracking up. And he goes, "What are you guys laughing at over there?" I go, "Who's Johnny?" <laughs> Maybe he's really good uh, goaltender. Yeah, T Joe, T Joe. Hey, if you can't if you can't laugh at yourself and you can't have the boys laugh at you, you know, who, you no. know, what kind of coach are you? I you can't know? imagine. Boom. I mean, you know, you know, growing up that sometimes your parents would just mix up the names if they have more than one kid. <laughs> So I can't imagine you've got twenty two kids running around. Children. Yeah, that's the problem. Wow, well, that's the problem. Adult children. Mm-hmm. But uh well, you know. I know how to keep the room light. The boys like that stuff, so I do it on purpose. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Just gonna throw one out and just see if they're paying attention or not. So you're yeah. sleeping through I the wish talk. that was the cause. <laughs> That's that's all right. That's all right. It happens. Uh, Petro, I also wanted to ask you, first of all, congratulations is due. Uh, 300 games as a pro. And in that same game, you hit your 200th professional assist. You're knocking the milestones down this year, big guy. Yeah, I told you I was coming back to close some doors. And <laughs> <laughs> you definitely are. Seems like I'm closing them all early in the year. So, uh, no, I mean, obviously, it's it's an honor to be able to play as long as I have and had the support I had not only at home, but um wherever i wherever i'm playing so it's it's been great um at the end of the day like i said to you pregame i mean this isn't about me this is about everybody that's helped me get to this point in my life whether it be coaches teammates friends family all that stuff so um this is more of a milestone that yes i stepped foot on the ice and accomplished but this is this is for everyone else this isn't for me it's been it's been fun watching actually we had quite a few in that game and in that little stretch like um jammer hit like 150 i think fphl points you hit 200 and 300 dozer hit a couple big ones earlier this year and then storage hit 100 fphl and pro points like they're kind of starting to come together a little bit now and so which is great to see for guys um but you know the other thing too is like all the individual stuff we talk about it's it's nice and it makes you feel like okay we're contributing but man it's got to feel so much sweeter when you got the in our case three points coming out with it yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, the reason that we all choose to play a team sport is because it's about something more than us. And I know Boomer preaches that all the time, whether it's on the ice or uh, out in the community. I mean, at the end of the day, that's the mentality we need to have is this game, this sport, this life is, is bigger than us. It's it's about everything that we can do for other people. And to be able to accomplish it with such a such a great group is, is something special. You just mentioned something. And I, want to, I don't even know if you guys know this. I just found out today that uh speaking of community all those bears that came in right for teddy bear toss i mean we did well over a thousand bears i forget what the total was um the last four bags went out today we have already distributed all the teddy bears because of all the various organizations in the community that work with the the river dragons to get them out so wow that's awesome unbelievable unbelievable job so not only you know stick tap to the organization everybody that yeah. Help throw some bears on the ice. I saw people coming in with garbage bags. Amazing. Thank you for your support, but your difference is immediate. The yeah. impact is immediate. Yeah. So no, and the Civic Center will be happy now too. So they can stop complaining about us throwing the teddy bears in the, in the building. So well, I mean, we would show a video tribute to the teddy bear <laughs> toss if we could, potentially at the next home game. Yeah, you never know. Hopefully. So we've got to cross some wires, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. just plug a few in. I don't know. We'll figure <laughs> that one out when we get there. Anyway, okay. So enough of enough of the the bang on the the Civic Center. But uh, seriously, great job uh, for all the fans, uh, the community. Thank you so much. You guys have been tremendous. So I, I did want to bring that up. Um, just let's wrap up uh, talking a little bit about the weekend here in the set with Carolina. I know that refereeing aside, and I, I'm going to do a very quick plug for the FPHL podcast. 
Dave Jackson was our guest this week, who is the Dean of Discipline now for the league, as well as a former NHL ref, and he's actually a rules analyst for ESPN. Uh, so Dave was on the show. We taped it yesterday, so that should be out maybe tomorrow, uh, maybe Thursday. But it's interesting to have the conversation with him and his philosophy about how things are done and how they try to you know, make the officials kind of try to get them on the same page, but they're human. Well, You know what I mean? Well, like, one, I haven't heard the podcast. And you won't for a couple days, but it'll be there. even when it is out, I'm probably not going to listen to it. Okay. That's just my... It's just me. But as a league, I mean, I don't know. Um, and I like Dave Jackson. I think he's uh, perfect for what we need. But at the end of the day, until a, as a league we decide to somewhat get on the same page, we can still have scrapping. We can still have all all our league and, and still play uh, a rough and tumble hockey game. But until we um, take out some of the caveats to the referees, um, you know, a hook is a hook, right? Like, I mean, if you look back at the NHL when they decided to actually call the rule book. Um, and when have, they had all those obstruction have calls. A, have, a re- right. have a reset. And I don't, when was that, Tom? Oh, gosh, we're going back 15 years now. So, all right, they reset, you know, and... Oh, uh, I can't believe they made those. No, they didn't make the rules. They just started calling them how they were supposed to be right. called, right? Right. So uh, until we make it easier for our referees to actually call the game, because, you know what, you know, a hook is a hook. If my stick is right here perpendicular with you and mm-hmm. I'm impeding you at all, it's a penalty. Right. In our league, it's not. Sometimes it is. Sometimes, and it is. that's well, that's my issue well, and I mean, my concern well, with it. Well, and but that's our fault because sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. And the bottom line is, it is the whole time. Yeah, and it's just not called all the time. It's not called all the time because we don't want ten power plays a game. Yeah, and that uh, or whatever, and that's what the problem is. I'm like, just call the damn game and stop stop putting that decision on the referees. We want to have a little looser game. We want to be, you know, we want, I want that guy to be able to play rough and tumble. And playing rough and tumble is different between Josh Petrantonio, you know, battling one on one with a guy. And when I say battling, you going in shoulder to shoulder, bang, good. Josh Petrantonio actually now has uh, a half a step on the guy, and the guy has one hand on his stick, and the other hand is right here. That's a hold. Right. It's not a battle anymore, and that's what's not getting called. And that's what gets things frustrated. That's what gets me yelling. And then when I get yelling, then everyone else gets rolling, and then the refs just suck. And the refs don't suck. They just need to be instructed. They need to call that. And I don't think that's what's happening. So I got two points out of that, and I'll just throw one out. And, we'll, and sorry, we'll I'm talk. fairly long-winded. No, okay. no, if you okay. don't know me by now, I'm fairly long-winded <laughs> with some of my answers. That's why this show is an hour. <laughs> uh, but, okay, so point number one, the NHL didn't want 10 power plays a game either when they did the reset. However, they said, guess what? For the first couple weeks, we're going to have 10 power plays that's... a game. Why? Because we're teaching a new standard. Well, And the players have to learn it. And... and... And they did. And that word that you just used, standard, is where I start to lose my well, in the mind. SPA, in the SPHL, Cottonmouth, we did the same darn thing. And you know what? Most of these guys aren't very smart. When I And I'm pointing at Josh Petrantonio <laughs> right now. Most of, my player, <laughs> most of my players aren't very smart, but they're smart enough to know that they're going to get called and we're going to sit in the penalty box until they stop doing it and, and start moving their feet instead of using their stick. Right. They get it. And you know what? The first month is going to be really tough and we're, and our power play or penalty kill is going to have to be pretty darn good. But once that happens, then we're good and we can still have all the fights. We can still have all the physical stuff. We can still have all that, but until we figure that out, um, I think there's always going to be some, uh, some, and you know what? There's always going to be some discrepancies and calls that uh, that guys were. And you know what? If you didn't see it, just tell me you didn't see it, but don't call it. Right. 
because there were a couple of those this weekend. Yeah, right? I don't I don't like being lied to, especially when it comes to that. Um, I mean, there was an. Anyways, it's a four four game. <laughs> it's a four four game. Right. Um, you don't see something. You're you know you're going by gut. I'm like. As a coach, I can go by the gut. Mm. As a referee, you can't go by gut. My, my gut feeling is telling me, well, it's a penalty. No, no, no. Did I see it? <laughs> Did I see it? That was the one when I was trying to tell you whatever uh, off air we were talking about this, and I said there was one other penalty that really bothered me. That was it, Wickline goaltender interference. Right. Because Cavalier skated into him. And 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 the referee did not see it. Right. He, he just saw, saw the pile. He saw cavalierly go wholesale and flop and whatever yep. and he reacted and i don't know anyway. the, even the delay of game one well, they didn't know who that was because they put the wrong guy in the right. box well yep. that's the one we were talking about initially and and you know what you can't you can't make that call in a 4-4 game why put yourself in that situation why make yourself look silly and then you basically cost a team and who knows we could have went on to lose the game anyways in overtime or sure. whatever. But, I mean, now it's on you. Mm. It's on you. And you know what? There's no way to – anyways. It and, I mean, with with that being said, we've been on the benefiting end of some of those calls at some points in the season as well. Oh, yeah. and, and that's where it's – my my biggest thing is standard. Set a standard between the two of you, and I'll pull your standard. If you want to call every ticky-tacky thing – Call it every night. Call it all night. Call well, it the and same. I, and, well, and I think it's really tough, uh, you know, as far as the, the the referees, the people that we have uh, doing the games, they're all refing different leagues, different standards, different this and that, and that's that's the really tough part about it is. And and I'm not blaming the refs. I'm not what I, I'm not banging on them that hard. It I am right now, but they do generally do a pretty good job and when i say this they probably have the toughest job in the whole league other than the without go- a doubt other than the goalies <laughs> who are our goalies again johnny and uh, kogan yeah. uh, um, johnny and coogie <laughs> um they probably, jimmy and chachi <laughs> they, probably, they probably have the toughest because you know what at the end of the day um you know they're traveling on their own dime they're traveling in their own vehicles I don't know how long they've traveled for some of them six, seven hours in their own vehicle, driving themselves where we get to go on a bus. Um, mind you, our bus is fairly nice for the most part when it's running and we don't, <laughs> we don't have a problem with it, but you know, for the most part, I mean, we're riding in comfort and we're getting there and these guys are all on their own and, uh, this and that. So, I mean, and then they can't win. They're in a they're in a lose right. lose situation no matter what because they got one team happy one team not happy with the outcome of the game and you have twenty five hundred people that hate your guts in the in the or thirty five hundred um, so anyways and and for the record when the refs come out and get booed that never helps the home team <laughs> ever. <laughs> I always, when I walk out, I'm like, guys, I'm going to go out first to give you a little bit of a cheer, okay? Hopefully you get a little bit of rebound from that, okay? Uh, anyways. You get you get cheered in Carolina? I didn't no, know that. I didn't Carolina, know they loved you that not much. Not Carolina. Not in Carolina. You have to send Petro out first in that building. Yeah. At least then you get, a, you get an uneasy malaise from the crowd in that yeah, case. Yeah, it's a, it's a combination of woos and boos. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I like it. I like it. So, uh, well, we have... Uh, we booze from your girlfriends, ex-girlfriends? We, that <laughs> yeah. Okay. We're going there, eh? We're <laughs> well, going no, there. Those are, those are the ones there. banging on the glass. <laughs> so, all right, well, that means it's time for a break. Uh, we're going to... We'll, we'll come right back. It's really gone down. Thank yeah. you, Tom. Yeah, Thank no, you. No, it's, it's time to go to a break. We'll be right back. This is the Behind the Bench Coaches Show. All right, welcome back here on the Behind the Bench Coaches Show. Tom Callahan joined, as I am every week, by head coach Jerome Bichard and this week's player guest, Josh Petrantonio. I uh, I got you guys all fired up last segment. But it's, it's a good segment, you know, productive discussion. Three guys in here having a coffee, just talking. It's like well, we're at our local me Tim and the refs, Hortons. Me and the refs, yeah. uh, <clears throat> like in my whole career, we don't really get along anyway, so I, they, I usually get fired up. <laughs> usually get fired up. I usually had the target on my back when I played. Mostly my fault. <laughs> Mostly the, my fault. What nickname came from that? Boom Boom or Stay Out of My Yard? 
Oh, I deserved it all, I guess, when it comes down to it. And man, I was, I was, I don't know. I remember I'd get a bad call or something like that, and I'd pick up the puck, like go to hand the, to the ref, and the ref would come to get it, and I just throw it away. <laughs> I was, I was, I deserved it. Yeah, like I would deserve most of that, the tens I got. <laughs> you know, that Jerome guy, he's kind of a jerk on the ice. <laughs> yeah. Off the ice, cool guy, but on the uh, ice, yeah. you know. Well, part of it though, I mean, you talked about it earlier, though. I mean, sometimes. And I, I know this is a little bit more of a thing in baseball than it is in hockey, but sometimes it is part of it is the show for the fans, you know, or or for the team or whatever you need to to do in the moment. Oh, I don't know what you were talking about. I know, I know the I hate the bench miner or whatever Facebook thing or whatever. What is what's it called? What's the Facebook uh, link that everyone? Oh, I, I still haven't uh, seen this. You you what is, you responded to what something on Facebook. I didn't respond to anything. I just oh. well, I just a, aired there, something out. Yeah, like, no, there's there's like a, a Facebook page. Uh, I don't know, but it gets pretty back and forth and uh, tra- the trash talk one or whatever. Like, like first of all, get, get a life, um, <laughs> and second of all, we we are entertainers. I mean, um, when I played. I knew what I was doing most of the time. I can count on maybe one hand in 15 years or 13 years I played that I was really upset and I really fought to fight. No, don't get me wrong. When I fought, I still wanted to give you a black eye and hopefully cut you open, you know, to, you know, say I won. (laughs) Right, right. right. But I mean, I didn't want anybody to get hurt. I didn't want this and that. And some of the fans get a little carried away and, you know, they want – body injuries and this yeah and I, I mean, mean i am and, all... and, and you know what you want to i'd much rather somebody punch me in the face and call it a day than at the end of the day somebody think badly of me you know like the other night the other night <laughs> in in carolina the older gentleman behind the bench there you know he's got he just bought the worst seats in the house right right behind the bench you can't see a dang thing anyways right and i'm standing i stand on the bench where the guys sit which puts me up higher so i can see when these guys are there whether i'm standing on that or standing in front of him he ain't seeing the game right and he's yelling and screaming at me and and sit down and get out of the way i'm like where do you want me to go sir like i mean (laughs) what do you what do you what, what do you want you know, and yeah. it got me fired up, and I'm like, I gave him a few choice words and lipped it to him, and I'm like, whatever. I was going to try to be nice. Now I'm going to be a total jerk uh, type thing. And, you know, he had his grandkids were there, and I don't know if it was his daughter or whatever. And I was fired up for a little bit, and then I'm like, eh. Got in between <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the locker room in between periods. I'm like, man, I was a jerk. Anyway, so then I... I, I wrote a, I'm sorry for swearing at you, sir. Please accept my apology. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of the game. <laughs> and I just put it up there and showed it to him. And I mean, he gave me a nod. <laughs> the kids said thank you or whatever. Mm. And I was being, a, actually, when he was doing that first, I had some bubble gum in my pockets. I'm like, I'm trying to throw bubble gum to the kids, you know, try to be a peacemaker, right? Right. Wanted nothing to do with it. He wanted blood. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, so good times. We always wonder what sat down on the bench. Now we know. I mean, anyways, entertain. Anyways, uh, yeah. back yeah. to the original comment. My post. Um, I don't mind the in-game fun, the booze, the you suck, the all that stuff is all all fine and dandy. But where I get upset and just to clear the air, nothing was said to me. This has nothing to do with anything that was said to me, said about me, said anything like that. But over the last month or so, I've seen a lot of stuff online about wishing harm on players, harm on players' families, um, and stuff like that. And I mean, at the end of the day, we're all out there working our bags off and entertaining everyone. And when that final buzzer sounds, nobody holds grudges. We have no problem with it. If you watch the end of games, 90% of us are shaking the other team's hands, giving each other hugs, wishing each other safe travels and all that kind of stuff. Um, Nobody on either side ever wants to see somebody who's sacrificing what we all sacrifice get hurt, get hurt badly, 
or anything bad happen to them or their families. So when that stuff is constantly being seen online, that's where I take offense to it. Not personally, but as a group, I don't think there's any place in sports for that. I don't think there's any place in society for that. And the biggest, the biggest thing that I would say is before you write something, read it and think about how you would feel if that was said about you or one of your family members or somebody that you cared about. And if you feel like it wouldn't upset you and wouldn't hurt you, then feel free to post it. I, I don't mind reading online, hey, Petrantonio sucks, da 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 I, I have no issue with that. I have an issue with when guys' personal lives are brought into it, whether it's parents, kids, wives, whatever it may be, or when stuff outside of hockey is brought up, whether it's injuries serious or even worse than some of the stuff that I've been seeing. So that that was my kind of, I mean, I really, really stay offline. I don't say a lot, but yesterday I was a little bit riled up. I saw a couple things yesterday that kind of rubbed me the wrong way, and I was like, you know what, I, I kind of want to want to speak out here and, and hopefully see some change for the better happen. Yeah, and really, players can say that to players on the ice. <laughs> players can get under your skin uh, wherever. Do I condone it? Do I condone a player talking about your mom or whatever? Pretty much, Pretty sure that guy doesn't know your mom. If that gets you rolling... As a player, eh, so be it. Not that, not that that would rattle me. Uh, you know what I mean? Well, I, but, I, I mean, I got news for you, parents. This is happening at the 12-year-old level, too, on right, the ice. Right. Like, kids and are it, saying this stuff to yeah, one they're another. Talking, this but, is not new. But, you know, it does. But for a total stranger to say that, you know, on. In a public forum, on, on, first of all. On this. Right. Which I call the devil's tablet, <laughs> Facebook or whatever. Like, nothing good happens from this, from any of that stuff. I mean, and uh, it's just, it just uh, you know, let the boys be boys during the game. Let the guys catcall each other, whatever, all you want. You know what? Two players going at each other, trying to get each other off their games, whatever. That's, that's somewhat condoned. Anything off of that? Not so much. And at the end of the day... To and Petros like point. before that, like what I was saying before that, I mean, I would much rather somebody punch me in the face, right, and knock a tooth out, cut me open, me bleed, than have somebody think that I'm a total piece of crap and not a nice person. Because one, obviously, you don't know me, <laughs> right? You know, and somebody, and again, like perfect example that gentleman that was sitting behind the, the the box. I mean, that bothered me so much that I had to go apologize because I don't want somebody thinking that I'm that bad of a guy. Right. So, anyways. Right. So. Petro, what was I going to say about your initial point? I don't know. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> it is my show. I can say it that. Is, right? it I kind of took it over again. It is it. Boomer's show. That's all right. You know what? That's a good place for a break. We'll gather our thoughts. <laughs> So stick around. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. This is the Behind the Badge Coaches Show. And welcome back on the Behind the Bench Coaches Show as we are back here halfway through tonight's uh, just this is a routine you show at this so, point. You sound so happy. Tom. I I'm just you know what the best chatter in the unprintable stuff is all in the breaks, but I mean the, <laughs> yeah. we have the best time. It's honestly like I said it to you guys earlier. Like this year's show is just so much more fun. I think we're having a lot more fun with it, and just you know it's become a little bit more talky and less hockey. Um, so it's fun. We're having a good time. Like I say, it's just three guys. We are literally sitting around drinking coffee. So that to me is what, what it's all about. When I was a kid growing up, I always imagined that, and of course I grew up on the border. So I got American and Canadian TV. Admittedly, my image of hockey is largely Canadian TV. So to me, it was always just old men sitting around in a coffee shop, drinking coffee, talking about the Leafs, talking about the Canadians, talking about the Canucks. That was my image of what it was like to grow old. You know what I mean? And that was what I thought. If you're a hockey fan, that's just what you do. And I kind of around like that's in Tim Hortons do. with a nice, warm, large double double. <laughs> that's and that's what you do. And you you just talk hockey. Actually, and okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and segue this for a second. If you've ever seen the movie Goon, 
not the finest hockey movie out there, but it's not the worst. Um, but to me, the saddest and most relatable character is the journeyman fighter at the end of his career that's talking to, to Sean William Scott's character at the end there where he's sitting by himself in the coffee shop smoking the, the shop, smoking the cigarette, and he gives him that speech, and I'm not going to blow it for anybody who hasn't seen it, but um, I'm like, man, there's, like, how many of those guys have I met? in my journey, you know, and it's just, it was the most relatable part of the whole movie, but Ross, the boss, Ray, I'm not sure who they were trying to name him after, but oh. any, any Sabres fans might know. No, maybe, maybe <laughs> that, that sounds vaguely familiar. <laughs> so, but, uh, it would just, you know, that was kind of interesting. I always thought, Hey, that's, you know, you sit around with your buddies and talk hockey. That's what it comes down to one of these days. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. And here we are. Here we are. We're sitting around talking hockey and uh, we're enjoying it. So I want to remind everybody, Blue Ridge is coming to town this weekend. Um, I asked Boomer's opinion on the TV show, so we'll save that Boomer's opinion on the TV show of the jerseys. If you want to check that out, Thursday night, 7 o'clock, the replay Sunday at 11 on Christian Television Network. But Josh, I'm going to ask you, do you have a favorite jersey this year? Because the Blackouts debut this weekend. Do you have a favorite from this year? Let's start with the, the River Dragons and then we'll go from there. See, red's my favorite color, and red has traditionally always been my favorite. Um, I really like the look of the blackouts this year, but I'm gonna have to go with the fifth year teals. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just I like I like the lines in them. I like the V logo. I just I think they look sharp. Red or black? Well, we ascertained earlier that you you like the red jersey as well. Yeah, Boone, but the red the red's probably my favorite, but the blacks are to me are clean and sharp. The red matches my. My gitch the best, my undergarments that I tuck oh over my, my elbow god, pads. My but. Oh my god! <laughs> there was a there was a fun story. Uh, Sevi Ballesteros, the golfer, always said green was his lucky color, and and somebody asked him about it, and he's like, I always have to wear two things that are green. He's like, so if you only see one, you know I'm wearing green underwear. <laughs> 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 I'm like, okay, that might be <clears throat> might be a little overshare, but all right. Nice. Um, but uh, so there you go. At, uh, but all right, Petro. So that and then growing up as a kid jerseys like what was your what was your favorite and you kind of came from a little bit different more modern era where we've seen a lot more jerseys but do you have well one he is from love? toronto so I don't, whoa, don't whoa, have to whoa whoa hamilton oh, not wow, toronto wow hamilton not toronto hey you're talking about a saskatchewan are guy. you from regina and anybody <laughs> are you from regina yeah exactly yeah. that's what i thought because that's the exact same thing you just said to me all right all right all right now well as a saskatchewanite i think everybody on that side is all from toronto sorry i can see that sorry just, ontario just, people just until be a little more you no longer speak english huh? until you no longer speak english <laughs> that's true yeah <laughs> yes um obviously the Montreal Canadiens were my favorite team growing up, and and their reds, their reds were always the sharpest. Nice but goal. controversial, the CAC candy cane blue, white, and red striped jerseys that they wore. The light blue ones? No, they were dark, like the blue that they wear, white and red. The entire jersey, top to bottom, was oh, in yeah, yeah, about yeah, an yeah. inch and a half stripes the whole way. Yeah, and they were the most beautiful, hideous things I've ever seen. <laughs> I love those jerseys. Interesting. Do you, did you get one? No, no. I've got a I've got a red uh, red Patrick Waugh jersey, and and I'm content with with that That's one. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I uh, my mine earlier was I used to love the old Canucks yellow flying V jerseys, but I will say if anybody watched Winter Classic, which I know a lot of people did, I actually really like this year's Winter Classic jerseys, whereas I usually don't. But I thought they did a nice job. See the Vegas the Golden Knights jerseys to me. Looked like a ripoff of the Boston Bruins cream jerseys. Mm, I, eh, I guess I could see that, but I don't feel that way. So I feel that you're incorrect. <laughs> but no, I, everyone's I, I entitled to their saying. opinion. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and, and I'm going to write mine out on Facebook. Although I do, I do want to give a, a, a nice uh, a nice nod to the the Kraken because their jerseys were the 1917 Seattle Metropolitan Stanley Cup jerseys. Oh, I Which did not know that. Cool. Yeah, so the first American team to win a Stanley Cup was Seattle in 1917. Speaking of the Winter Classic, did you see how the boys rolled off the buses? I did not. Oh, the Vegas Golden Knights all were dressed up as Elvis Presley. And the <laughs> Seattle Kraken were all fishermen with the overalls, and, and they were all carrying a large bass they handed out to, to fans on their way, and it was, it was epic. It That's was epic. pretty yeah. fantastic. I, I would have... 
I would have gone for the grunge musician, but all right, Fisherman works for me. Yeah. So that, uh, all right, I got to ask you about the, the drip for the boys this year. Like who's the, who's the sharpest besides Boomer? We know Boomer's got it together, you, you know. Style? Yeah. Because we've seen a lot more of the fit check on the socials this I year. I don't have any style. See? My wife's got good taste. I have no style. Does she lay out your outfits for you? No, she doesn't. Okay. I'm a little bit impartial to to Kars because he's a fellow Italian and we have the same same fashion sense. But um, there's there's a lot of guys. Are you guys, guys both from Toronto? Carson is actually from Toronto, okay. so you got 50% right. Um, but I said Italian, not Ontario. Right. Anyways, <laughs> yeah. um, no, a, a lot of the boys. I, I heard you. I, just, <laughs> he's like, I heard you. I chose to ignore you. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the boys got good style. I mean, Kirky's always got good fits. Uh, um, car dresses really well. If you can pull off the short pants, like uh, anklet pants, I guess that if you can. Well, you don't style. like the five inch inseams that Kogs likes to wear? <laughs> Yeah, no. Or, or I just his the, shorts are you talking yeah. about? Okay. Yeah. I just thought that was so you could show people your socks. Like everybody wants to wear cool socks now, so you got to wear shorter pants to show off the socks. No, it's so that your ankles don't get too warm. No, oh, okay. That's I, 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 I what I don't understand is I see guys now wearing what is essentially a complete suit up top right down to the jacket and shorts that are clearly match the suit. Like, we're not talking they're wearing swim trunks here. Like, it is a tailor fit pair of shorts. Yeah, if anybody, with a complete if suit. anybody does that on our team, which I don't think has. anybody would. That's that to me, that yeah. screams fraternity. And I'm going to fine you or cut them or cut you, one of the two. <laughs> yeah, well, there so you go. I challenge anybody. How about find them and then cut them? I, I challenge anybody on the River Dragons to wear shorts with their suit. Absolutely. First yeah, one, that's, first one's gone. That's just not going to happen. <laughs> as unintelligent as you think the boys are, they're <laughs> smarter than that. <laughs> nice. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think that's, I'm going to guess it's a European thing, but I don't know. It just seems kind of weird. Uh, 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 hard pressed to believe that. Toronto yeah. thing. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> here we go. It's actually a hammer. What is this? Day. What is this? Rip on Petro Day? First the girlfriends actually, in Carolina just and on, now the Toronto just, thing. Just oh on, man. Just Ontario in general. Yeah. There's there's actually a shop at Cops Coliseum that sells nothing but short, short pants. Short suits. Yeah. yeah. Really? There you go. Yeah. No, there's not. It's also <laughs> also I don't even know what it's called anymore, but it's definitely not cops. I think it's uh first first Ontario now. I, I can't keep up with corporate names for places. Oh, so Iverwin Stadium, which is now Tim Hortons Field, will always be Iverwin Stadium to me. Right. right, right. Yeah, I would agree with that. That's uh, I don't know. And now they do the thing where they split up the naming rights for one is the stadium, one is the field. Do we still have a Sky Dome? No, no, it's the Rogers Center this week. I think, I think. <laughs> it is Rogers Center. It's the yeah. same building, though, right? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Everything's the exact same. Just the they just want to pay a million dollars to rebrand everything. Yeah. Probably more than a million, but yeah. Yeah, and that just, well, yeah, it's far more than a million dollars, that's for sure. But no, you're right. I mean, it just, but but it is. It's always Sky Dome. And the other thing is, they had the best mascot, Domer the Turtle, for the Sky Dome. That was a great mascot. I don't know if you can still have Domer the Turtle. I suppose yeah, you could. I did not know that. We have Rinky. We have Rinky for the rink. Really? Is that his name? Yeah. The panda? Polar bear? Uh, that one? Oh, I wanted him to be a rat. <laughs> Get it? Rinky the rat? Rink rat? That Pol would have been perfect. Polar bear Ooh, panda. Missed yeah. the, Close enough. Uh, that's why Chubby is is funny for the... Um, I think the Leafs also, their mascot's named Chubby, right? No, uh, or Carlton. Carlton the bear. Yeah. But Chubby is the bear in Charlotte for the yeah, Checkers. Right. So he's Chubby Checker. Yeah. Okay. I thought that yeah. was a good one. I like, I like Yuppie. The... Uh, the Habs one. You'd be the, the word that means nothing in French or English. Correct. That's correct. why they picked it. <laughs> so he's transcended, kind of like the, the Philly fanatic. And I, how do you guys feel about Gritty? Yeah, I don't know. Oscar the Grouch? Uh, you know what? I mean, don't he, mind he it. served his purpose. He really did. He came out and went more viral than I've ever seen a mascot go in my entire life. And I mean, I think that... It's actually Whether pretty you like good it or you, dislike it, you you see it, so it's, yeah. it's bringing exposure. Like Philadelphia Flyer, Flyers. Like, what else are you gonna have for a mascot? Yeah, like 
Airplane. Bird. Something with wings, yeah. Gritty flyers. The you know their mo is, you know, hard nose. So the gritty. Broad Street Bullies. Yeah, Gritty's not not bad. Pretty good actually. Yeah, I uh, I was <laughs> I was not on board, but to your point, Petro, I feel like yes. The more you think about it, the more. That's kind of the point, you know. And I mean, that's why we get Scorch and Torch out there as much as we can, and yeah, people identify with it. So, but you're right; yeah. he's gone insanely viral. Yeah. So that's all right, Philadelphia. Good job, good job. We'll give you we'll give you some kudos there. All right, guys, Blue Ridge is coming in. If we actually oh, yeah, do want to talk we were, a little hockey, forgot we had hockey. Yeah, yeah. no, we we do have a couple of games this weekend: Friday, Saturday night. Uh, the Bobcats coming in, and a team that is markedly different than the first time we saw them. They've changed over a lot of the roster. They just made another trade. And actually, if he's there, I don't know if he's reported yet, but Alex Basie might even be coming back to town with, with the Blue Ridge Bobcats. So that, uh, I mean, but that's a team trying to find its identity in its inaugural season. We saw Mississippi go through exactly this last year, right? The first little part of the season, they even changed coaches, which the Bobcats haven't, but it's tough to be an expansion team. Well, I I think Zemi's done a really good job. Um, what's his first name? Johnny. Boy, boy, <laughs> Johnny. Yeah, John, Johnny. Johnny Zemlichka. Yeah. <laughs> boy, check. That's right. Um, no, I think uh, Zemi's done a really good job. I mean, he's found his way. I mean, I think early on, I think we talked about it this afternoon. <clears throat> early on, I think he was forced to have some people there just to have a team. Um, <clears throat> found out who they were and what they brought to the table. And I think he wanted... I'm just reading into it uh, more of a uh, team concept as opposed to me concept and uh, um, got rid of some guys that maybe people thought there should be there, but I mean, maybe not represent what he's looking for. So made some changes. And the one thing is they work hard, they work hard and uh, um, they play within a system. And when you have a hardworking system team, they're tough to play against. And uh, um, I think they, uh, I think they have a really good power play, which uh, we need to be on our P's and Q's and um, stay out of the box. But, uh, you know, I think, uh, um, again, I think our depth is probably um, one of our strengths against those guys. They have maybe one one line that can really hurt you against any one of our lines, and we have two more that, you know, can, can, can uh, hurt them, so. Yeah, no, he's done a he's done a great job. I mean, I I talked to him a little bit. Um, I've known Zemi for years, um, but his his big mo is bringing in guys that are that are coachable that are going to buy into his system and play his style. And I mean, I think that that's the reason there was a lot of turnover early. Is there was some guys there that have played some years in this league under different coaches and kind of thought that you know what, I know the right way and, and you're a new coach and I, I think that I know more than you and whatever the case may be, I'm... Well, most players think that. <laughs> it doesn't matter who, where you are. Most players think that. Yeah, but I'm, I think he's done a, a great job with, with bringing in guys and having guys buy into his system. And um, yeah, I mean, they're, they're a team that's starting to find their identity and, and once they do and get rolling, it's going to be it's going to be only up for them. So. And they have a... R- Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty good goalie that uh, gives them a chance every yeah. single night. You know, it's interesting too because we, so we were talking, boom, you and I on the TV show talked a little bit about kind of the divide that's at least appeared in the standings. But I feel like there's a lot of mid pack teams right now, both divisions, who need to figure out who they want to be this year. You know, the, the Motor City starting to pick it back up a little bit, but outside of, I'll call it the top four Carolina, Columbus, Binghamton, Motor City, there's a lot of question marks. You know, Baton Rouge could go either way. Withville could go either way. Port Huron could go either way. Like, they could be a good team. They could pick it up in the second half, but they might not. Well, I think Withville, with Zemi as the coach, uh, Zemi has an image in his head what they want to be. So, I mean, I think uh, out of the teams, uh, out of the teams that are in that mid pack, I'd say Withville and Motor City both kind of have a little bit of an idea of what they want and and how they want to get there. Um, and then you have Mississippi, Baton Rouge, and Port Huron. Um, they all have a vision, and 
their vision is is similar, and that's just run and gun. Your and visions of sugar plums dancing in heaven. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, they're just running. They're run and gun, and you know all they care about is scoring goals. All they care about is scoring. Yeah, goals they want to. They want to track meet every night. We'll score. We'll score nine, and we'll let you score eight. And uh, I mean, it's entertaining, but is it? Is it? Uh, it's entertaining throughout the season, but it's not very. Uh, um, sustainable when it comes down to the end in the playoffs, I, I believe. That's just my opinion. That's why I'm interested to see now. The other team I wanted to mention and forgot was Danbury. Danbury beat Binghamton twice. And champions last year still have some of that core. Now you're doing it without Amesbury for 18 games. And I don't know if that's causality or not there, but now they're trying to to come together as a team at the right time. Right? Uh, you know what? I uh, and I'm not 100 percent sure. I haven't really looked at their lineup. Their lineup is fairly similar to what they had. I think last year at the beginning of the year, or this year at the beginning of the year, they were missing a bunch of D. They didn't have. I don't think they had what they needed. Whether injuries, this and that, and I know they got Josh LaBelle uh, back, and I think that Abdullah guy. Um, they got another big defenseman. I think that w- wasn't there early but i think he's there now and you know anyway so um danbury definitely has an identity that's not the issue um um and you know and that building is really hard to play in because it's so tiny and you know it's very hostile and i know there's a a big uh to do with binghamton and danbury that's probably the classic uh that's probably the classic, uh, you know. That's the that's the Carolina Columbus of the, the other division. That's for the sure. rivalry for sure, and uh, probably a little bit more heated uh, than ours uh, per se. But I mean, um, you know, it's it's and they play each other all the time. Anyways, yeah, let them let them go at it and beat each other up. That's well, I mean, that's a lot of the teams. That's you know your Port Huron Motor City. That's your Mississippi. Baton Rouge is just kind of the way the league works out sometimes with the travel. Actually, ours, I will say I'm pleasantly surprised. Not that we don't see teams a lot, but at least it feels a little more balanced this year. Yeah. I Maybe mean, that's the Baton Rouge. I effect. don't know. Well, we played Carolina. We were going to play them five times in a row or, or four times. What did we play them four times four, in a row? Four times four, in yeah. a row, and then we got them in two Wednesdays, I think. Yeah. So, so five out of nine are against the same team, which – you're bound to have stuff happen. Right. Yeah. And especially in a 56-game season. Yeah. You know, it, when you have a short schedule and you're just trying to play those teams a lot, that's yeah. kind of no, I'm interested to see the old Bobcats. Uh, the old Bobcats. <laughs> Bobcats are rolling into town. There you go. Friday, I'm, I'm just excited that, that we got a nice home stretch here for the next that's true. month and a half, two months. We got, what, one road trip? Through now to the end of February. Just, yeah. Oh, can't wait to wake up in my bed every morning. We're going to declaw the Bobcats. How about that? I like it. I like it. We'll see signs. <laughs> declaw the Bobcats. Well, I've reached the end of my coffee, which means it's almost the end of the show. So Aww. that's okay. But, guys, thanks for stopping by this week. You bet, Tom. Thanks Appreciate you us. being here. And uh, so, Captain Josh Petrantonio, head coach Jerome Boom Boom Bichard. And we're going to come back, wrap the show up here in just a moment. Stay tuned. We got one more break coming your way, and this is the Behind the Bench Coaches Show. All right, back to wrap things up here on the Behind the Bench Coaches Show. Just want to remind everybody, we've got those two games coming up this weekend. Friday night, 735 on the puck drop, and then Saturday is the debut of the blackout jerseys. That is a 705 game, plus coming up. Later this month on Wednesday, January 17th, we have Pucks and Prayers Night. Uh, You can go to rdragons.com for more information on that. Plus, on the 13th, we have our family four-pack night, our next one coming up here. And for just $40, you get four tickets to that River Dragons game, plus four hot dogs, four popcorns, four Pepsi products, and four tickets for Chick-fil-A chicken sandwiches. Only available through the River Dragons office. Brought to you by Chick-fil-A Midland and our sister station, Kissin 99.3. Give us a call at area code 706-507-4625, 507-4625. Or come on down and visit us at the Civic Center office on the west side of the building in the little courtyard there. We look forward to seeing you. Come on down and join us for River Dragons Hockey. All right, my thanks to the captain, Josh Petrantonio, and head coach, Jerome Boom Boom Bichard. Thank you so much for listening in. This has been the Behind the Bench Coaches Show.